Today we're making beautiful Dollar Tree crafts. Keep watching! I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a honey sale sign. So this is a calendar page. It says honey for sale. This is the 2023 calendar. I'm going to use some dark gray or wrought iron paint and a brush, Mod Podge and a brush, and this thrifted sign that I got from Goodwill. I'm going to start off by taking my sanding block and just going over this. The paint on the top of it was raised so I wanted to make it nice and smooth so I just went ahead and sanded that down and then wiped it and dried it. I'm going to add some of this paint with my sponge brush. Use whatever brush you would like and I will say I had to cover this three times. Here is that calendar front and back for your own reference. Okay, so we're going to use this honey page because we're going to do bees in this video. And I want to make this fit, so you just simply put it on there and trim it down. If you feel better using um, like a pen or a pencil and a ruler, you can go ahead and do that. The reason we paint it dark is because we do not want those dark lines of the calendar to show through. And when you paint it dark, it will not show up at all. Seeing is believing, so you better stay tuned. All right, so we're going to add a good layer of Mod Podge, nice and even on there, and lay that calendar page right on top. This print is absolutely beautiful. To me, it is farmhouse and cottagey and rustic, and I love it. You can easily just gently lift it if you get any bubbles or lines trapped in there. I'm going to press it with my hands, and then I'll take my little Mod Podge squeegee and go over the top. I like to go from the middle outward and hold on to the other side so it doesn't slip because sometimes it will slide. And that depends largely on the amount of glue that you use underneath. Okay, so this looks pretty good. We can let it dry. Do you see that little calendar hole up there? This pen, Furniture Repair Marker in Oak, is the perfect color for that lining. So if you've got some of these, you can fill that hole in so you don't notice that it's a calendar page. Just looks like a beautiful print. This came from the fall uh, decor at Dollar Tree. And then this ribbon is also from the Dollar Tree. It is wired, it looks like honeycomb. Very pretty ribbon. In person, it looks even better. I'm gonna cut four pieces of a few of them, two pieces of a few of them. However you want to do it, it's just going to be a little stacked bow. I'm going to dovetail the ends on all of them. So the white burlap down below ribbon is from burlapfabric.com. I'm going to just start layering these on here. You can do it in any order or you don't have to do it in order. You can just stack them in X's just all willy nilly if that's what you want to do. That's totally fine. I just like to do it this way. Just my preference. So I've tried to sort of divide them up so that I have some difference and texture and colors. I'm going to take that X of ribbons, that bunch, flip it over, and then just using a little bit of this jute twine, I'm going to cinch it and tie it in a few knots in the back. Then you can take your little ribbon edges and turn it over and just flip it out. The ones who have wire are the ones that have wire in them. You can just sort of bend those or curl them or have them standing out, whatever you like. I just find that a flat bow doesn't give it very much dimension and it doesn't look very cute. So I like to give mine a good fluff. If you like the center, you can do the center. If you like the outside, you can do the outside. Now keep in mind that the square signs at Dollar Tree are the same size as the calendar pages. So if you would like to just grab a square Dollar Tree sign, if you don't have a tin sign like this, you can do it and then you'll still have a really nice look. Really nice sign. I just tied it onto that hanger and added a little glue so it won't slide up and down. And that'll keep it a little more secure than I think just the glue. So I'm going to pull off little ferny pieces here. 
because they match the greenery that's in the picture and just add those here and there in that bow to give it a little something extra. I love bees. I've done lots of bee projects and um, yeah, I'll, I'll link some bee videos for you so you can check out the other videos, the other creations that have been made on this channel through the years. And I'm just putting these here and there. If you prefer to use flowers, go ahead and do that. If you don't have a honeybee calendar page and you want to do lemons or you want to do whatever, you can use any print. Just kind of, you know, coordinate your, your ribbons and your greenery to whatever page you're doing. I really like the look of that. And here's the finished bow. Well, pretty much finished, right? You can always add more. And you know I always do. So I had some of these little leftover bits and bobs of flowers. I'm just going to add a couple of those in there. Because the bees like the flowers, right? I'll just add those right there. If you don't want to put these on, you can leave it off. You don't even have to put any greenery. You can just use your ribbons if that's what you want to do. It is nice and smooth and ready to go. If you want to put it outside, you can get Mod Podge in an outdoor formula. You can put that all over the top to seal it off. Then it'll last a long time. Okay, the next is going to be a framed canvas. This is so easy. I've got some paint star sticks, some antique wax from Waverly, some wet wipes, and a canvas from Dollar Tree. This one says, let it be. Love it. I'm going to take my paint sticks and we're going to turn those into a frame. So you know how to do this. I'm sure everybody's kind of experimented with this. I want to make a little box frame. So I'm measuring off my little pieces and then I'm going to cut this down. And I realize that's not the right saw for this project, but my other saw was MIA. So I'm going to use this wet wipe. And the reason I'm using a wet wipe is because I want it to be sheer enough that I can still see the wood grain underneath it. Again, that's a preference. If you want to use a paintbrush and put it on there, you certainly can, but this way you can kind of still see the texture. I'm going to take my sanding block and round off the edges where I cut so there's no splinters and it looks like one piece like it was made that way. And then I'm going to go over it with my wax because I want everything to be nice and complete. You can watch my videos Mondays and Thursdays at 5. All right, I'm gonna add some hot glue here. Hot glue is going to be fine because it's going to be indoors. Burnt my finger. Protect your fingers, please. It's gonna be inside, so we don't have to worry about the glue letting go or anything like that. And giving it this little shadow box look, you can sit it on a shelf or you can hang it up, whichever way you wanna do it. This gives it a broader base and it will sit fine by itself. In my house anyway, it uh, it sits up very nicely. It didn't even fall when I raised and lowered my table. How about that? If you'd rather use super glue or some other type of glue, you can do that. Hot glue just works best for um, time, you know, in the videos. Now that's just easy, right? But let's fix it a little more. We're going to cut out this little, the tiny little bee picture that's on the back of the calendar. So this is on kind of a thicker paper. I'm gonna slightly fussy cut, not completely, but slightly, and add some school glue to the back. And then we're gonna add it down on this canvas to make it look like it's supposed to be there. You could even put it up there on the honeycomb if you wanted to, but I thought this little negative space here was just crying out for something extra. So I'm just gonna pat it down and I'll take my Mod Podge and this is just some matte Mod Podge. I'll go over that bee, give it just a minute to, to sort of be happy there before I go back over it. And I'll cover the whole canvas and dry it. The next project is house decor with an actual little Dollar Tree house. All right, so we're gonna use some of this beautiful black and white farmhouse looking bee fabric, a scatter kind of sign. Both of those came from Dollar Tree. Some matte Mod Podge 
and I thrifted this, but I believe that's a Dollar General sticker on the back. I got two of these and was so excited when I found them because they are very heavy duty and very substantial looking. I'm just going to lay it on top of the fabric to roughly cut out how much I'm going to need. I am using the back side after the sticker is removed and I'm just going to go over this with a good thick layer of Mod Podge. We're going to use a thick layer because you don't have the issues with fabric that you have with paper as far as bubbling and such. So I'm going to lay it down here, space it out, make sure I got room on both edges, press it out with my hands and then I'll use the squeegee to completely flatten it out. Then I'm going to immediately go back over it with another thick coat of the Mod Podge. I try to make it kind of even and keep my brush strokes going the same way. Okay, so once it is dried, I'm going to cut off more of that excess. Very sharp scissors. But then I'll take the sanding block and really get that kind of press down and clean against that edge. It will look like it was painted on and made this way. So just doing this shears the fabric off. Now, that's why you need to make sure you put a lot of glue on there because it is going to dry very hard and that's what you want. And also when you sand it like this, that kind of gives it that little rough edge and I love that. So I've got some black beads and some yellow beads. You can get beads at Dollar Tree, any type that you like. I've got some cotton cord. And I think I want to use this instead of jute this time. Do this however you like though. This is a preference thing. You could also use Baker's twine if you prefer that. I do have some yellow and white Baker's twine, but I was afraid it would be just a little bit too much, a little too busy. So we left that one out. I'm gonna go through the middle here and just make a little loop. Pull that string through there. And that's how we're gonna hang it. Then I will take both of the strings and put it through the black bead and then I'll pull those apart and I do have like a little hot glue see there how we do that a little cool temp hot glue twist that tip so you get a nice strong tip like on a shoelace and then I'll press it through the little narrow beads these yellow ones so it's kind of bright this is almost probably more appropriate for maybe lemon decor, but it's the same color that's on the little hanger there. So I wanted to keep that kind of consistent. Now I'll put them back together. So see the little yellow ones are on separate and then we'll put them back together with the black bead, just like that. And now I'm going to make a loop and then tie a couple of knots in there so that nothing slips through the beads. I don't want my beads coming off. once that's done I'm going to put it down and wrap it around just where the end of the roof would be and add a little glue on the front side to hold it in place so I can get it wrapped around I'm going to kind of wrap this a few times and you don't have to do it this way of course if you don't want to do it like this you don't have to kind of tie it and then wrap it around again you can make a bow here you can hot glue it you could just if you wanted to skip the beads all together you could just hot glue that little sign that says scatter kindness you could just glue that right to the front you can finish off your back this is actually the original front but you could paint that if you wanted to no one will see it at my house then, just to make extra sure it doesn't go anywhere, I'm going to add a little hot glue and pull it down and press it down. And this is how it looks. Love that black and white with it. It looks really cute. The next is B blocks. So I have got my wood blocks here, or dice. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon. I have a, I think it's a sunflower yellow and a jet black paint, some sponge brushes, and some letter stickers. I'm going to start off with our little dice. We're going to call them dice. How about that? And I'm going to color 
this black. I'm just going to color it like the circle part on one of the facings. And then two of them will be this beautiful golden yellow color. So you got that? One will be black and the other two will be yellow. Once they're dry, we're going to take these stickers. Use whatever alphabet stickers you have. And if you have, um, you know, a Cricut and you want to do that, you can certainly do that. But I had these stickers and I wanted to show you how you could do it if you don't have a Cricut. So I'm just going to put B on this one. The black one will get an E and then the other yellow one will get an E. We'll really press that down so I don't have to worry about any bleeding underneath. I know you can't see it on the black one yet, but it's there. Once you get those secured down, we're going to start painting the other colors. So the ones with the yellow face are going to get a coat of black. I'm stippling it on the top to try to reduce the chances of it bleeding. Go all over the block now and just make that entire block black. I know it's out of focus. I had it kind of zoomed in a little, little close, but you get what I'm doing. And then you can just use your little tool from your Cricut or peel it up with your fingernails if you got good nails. And I did scratch a little too hard there into the wood. The wood's a little soft and I uh, scratched my E, but I can fix it with a little paint. So I'm just going to use a really fine tip brush. I got this brush from Essential, Essential Stencils. Whoo, I'm tongue tied. I got this from them and it is really fine and so easy to work with. It's like using a paint pen. I mean, this thing is perfect. So I'm just going back over to kind of neaten it up. And then we're going to connect them together with some hot glue. Feel free to use wood glue or whatever type of um, adhesive that you have. This will be inside so the hot glue should work fine. Plus we're going to do something else to secure them. They're not going to go anywhere. I'm going to flip it over to the bottom and grab some of this really cute bee ribbon and flip it over. I got my bee ribbon last year, but I am pretty sure they have it again this year or what I'm seeing is what they had left from last year. So hopefully you can find this if you like to do bee decor for spring and summer. Press it down, go all the way back around to the original spot and then glue it down neatly. I don't want to put too much because I don't want to see a track of glue underneath that beautiful ribbon. It'll really cheapen the look and I want this to look high end, right? We want high end. I'm going to slip another piece of ribbon through there right over the B, the letter B, and I'm going to tie a little bow here. Excuse my camera work. You know how to do this. Make that little loops, make the little loops and then wrap them around each other and poke one of them through the middle. And then just pull them and then fix the tails, you know. Flip the bow which way you want it and then fix your tails. And I'm gonna trim my tails down some. So it looks like the bee's just sitting on the top. And I think that is cute as it is. But I'm going to take a little bit of this. It almost reminds me of ragweed. It grows wild in the fields out here where I live. Will make you sneeze and your eyes water. Oh, it's terrible for hay fever. But it sure looks cute in these projects. So I'm going to use the fake form of them. And add a couple of little green leaves that I had left over as well because bees really like the pollen off of these plants. And they make a lot, trust me. I inhale enough to make a whole beehive probably in a season. So that's how this is going to look. And you could add flowers if you prefer that, or you don't have to put anything, just use the bow, or you could just use the word bee. Now we're gonna do a bee flower box. This one was so fun. I love making little habitats and terrariums. So we're going to take this bee box from Dollar Tree. I just put the lid aside. I'm going to take some Gerber daisies. 
I'm going to take some of these little bees from Dollar Tree, little wooden bees, and some greenery, a little piece of foam, and then a moss mat. And then I have some wildflowers to use. So I want to get this where it will fit in the bottom of this box so that we have a nice base. I've cut it at a slant on both sides so that it will lay nice and flat in the bottom. I'm going to put a good deal of hot glue on here and press it down. Hold it down for just a minute and let that dry. Let it cool off. You can kind of feel it in the box. Then I'll be trimming down a piece of this moss mat to go over that piece of styrofoam. And we'll glue that down. So how is the weather where you are? Today it is very cold. When I woke up this morning there was frost on the ground. But I'm pretty sure by this evening it will be in the 60s. So I'm not mad about that warm weather, the warmer weather. I really am not. I love to go outside and feed the ducks and when the wind is not biting cold and it's not scorching hot, I have such a good time walking down there by the lake. I hope they'll behave for, for y'all so that I can get a little bit of, of a video in there at some point of the ducks. I've done it before um, in other videos. I think last summer we had a video with the ducks in it. So they are so cute. They're the sweetest things. And sassy? Oh my goodness. Who knew that ducks could be so sassy? But you see what I'm doing here to get this moss stuck down? Now that looks like, it looks good, right? It's kind of seamless. Looks pretty good. Then I'm going to cut these all down. It's important that these are smaller than the height of the box because if you get them too t tall, they'll just kind of bend in there. You don't want that to happen, right? I'll start laying down sort of a background greenery. I'm just going to put those in the back. And then I will push those wires from the flowers right down into the styrofoam. And it, again, if something doesn't fit, just take it out, clip it, and then put it back in. Because you're just pushing it into there. We haven't glued anything except this flower. I could not get it to set right except for gluing it flat. So I added some little white flowers beside it. You can see what I did there. We're going to use this from Dollar Tree. It's a little candle stand. And I have it upside down. And we're going to use the bottom as the top. So I'm going to add some glue to it and then set the box down on top of it. If I did it the other way, the it was too wide and you could see it poking out both sides. It didn't quite look right. So this way it looks like a pedestal and it fits on there nicely. This is a little bead. I always pick these up. Even if I find only one of them in the style, if I see them at Goodwill and the bins, I just grab it. Nobody else is looking for this stuff so they don't care anything about it. And we'll put a little topper on it and we'll add this little bee right on top. He's up there with the best view of all the bees. They're little stickers so they have a little foam under there and you just peel the white off so you can stick them down but you can use hot glue in areas that you think you know you might really need that extra stick to itiveness. Let's call it that. Yeah stick to itiveness. We just made up a new crafting word. And then I'm just going to add these around on the inside too. And I didn't put a lot of glue on them. So if you get ready to kind of reposition, you can kind of reposition, which I did because I didn't want both my bees in the same direction. So I put one on the little flower and I put one in the middle of this flower. And I'm just going to pull it off and turn it in a different direction. These bees are working hard. They're, I want to give it the impression that they are all over the place trying to get their work done. They are busy bees, right? Busy bees. Yeah, I like the look of that better. Now to add a little something to that pedestal bottom, I'm going to take some of my Gorilla Glue and my glue gun and go around the base. And we're going to make a little bit of greenery on here. I'm going to kind of wind this little flower around too. I'm going to glue it to the bottom on top of that greenery and then twist it up. You probably want to use some hot glue and some Gorilla Glue or use some E6000, something like that, to hold these on because it can be very difficult to get things to stick onto a shiny, like ceramic type surface. 
So, yeah, I mean, after the fact, mine did pop off and I had to, um, to re-glue it. So, just, just a little information there, for, just so you don't get frustrated. If you're going to give this as a gift or sell it, you definitely need to use some super glue. And this is how this one looks. This was easy, right? This was so easy, but look at the impact it makes. That's super cute. You could even use this at Easter if you wanted to. I mean, I think summer, spring, Easter, very cute. This is a look at the five projects that we did in this video. Got the little bee blocks and the little bee habitat here. And I love that the box is almost like a honeycomb shape. Not, I mean, you know, it's almost like that. You know that I know you can do these projects, right? I know you can do it. You got to have faith in yourself. I have people saying that they haven't crafted in so long and they haven't found inspiration. I'm giving you loads of inspiration. And if you need more, subscribe because I am always doing my best to bring you budget-friendly DIYs that look different than the standard crafts. We want to make it look high-end and beautiful. Why don't you scatter some kindness today down in the comment section? Say something nice to somebody else who's commenting. Get to know each other. We're a big family here at Making It My Own DIYs. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I will see you again real soon. Bye.